What's up guys, Evil Deer here, and I'm back for some more Esperanto slash World of Warcraft lessons. Now before I break right into the revision of this video, I just wanted to point out like a little funny fact that I've noticed. Well, not really a fact, just an observation. And that is that when I do these World of Warcraft videos, people go to my Esperanto vblogs and go, when are you going to do another vblog? And then when I go and do vblogs, people go, when's the next Esperanto um, World of Warcraft lesson? So it's like a constant battle trying to keep everyone happy. But anyway, I'm glad that you guys show enough interest to even want to watch my videos. And I probably just picked a fight with the wrong guy here. Anyway, let's begin with a little bit of revision, okay? So, well, I'm just going to heal up because I'm about to die already. Okay, so first up, what is the word for family? It is familio. Familio. And how would you say, where am I? Kie mi estas? Kie mi estas? And how would you say, he is the most ugly mob? Li estas la play malbella estagio. Li estas la play malbella estagio. And you're probably noticing right now I'm just healing a ton because that guy really hurt me. And what is shaking everything? There must be a, a giant around here. Do you guys remember the word for giant? It was giganto. Uh, it might be this dude. Now I'm in a little bit too high level area so I'm just going to move back up to kind of where I was last time and then we'll try and look at another direction. Okay. And how do you say, um, how many members are in your family? Kiom da anoi havas via familio. Kiom da anoi havas via familio. Okay, I'm going to go this way. This is where we came from before, but I'm just going to go up north a bit and see if the mobs are a little bit lower level there. Okay, and how do you say, how old are you? Kiom da yadoi vi havas. Kiom da yadoi vi havas. And do you remember the word for world? It was mondo. Mondo. I wonder if I can get any quests down here, actually. I should probably go check it out and see if there's any quests over here to pick up. And do you remember how to say entire world? Tuta mondo. Tuta mondo. And what was the word for Monday? It was lundo, lundo, okay? And I'm just going to go quickly teach you a new verb now, and I just want to practice a few things that we covered in a previous lesson, but I haven't touched on in a while. So, the new verb is to clean um, or kind of to wash, okay? So, it's referring to when you're, you know, you go and you wash your hands or you go wash yourself. Um, that's, that's basically what this verb means. So, the verb is lovey. And that means to wash. Okay? Oh, I might be able to go into this building and get some quests. So, how would you say, I wash myself? Or, I wash me? Me lavas min. And how would you say, he washes himself? Li lavas sin. And what about, she washes herself? She lavas sin. Remember, you got to use uh, the the pronoun si when you're referring to itself for other people. For instance, not including yourself. So remember, si replaces all other pronouns when referring back to itself, except for me, which is I, uh, ni, which is us, and vi, which is you. They always keep their original pronoun. Okay, so I guess we're going to start off a little bit of what we've learned so um, uh, with like a little bit of new gr vocabulary and words and grammar and stuff. So you see we're in this kind of like little village type ar area, or maybe it's a fortification. Do you guys remember the word for fortification? I covered that in like the second lesson. It was fortificajo. So how would you say, based on what you remember, I walk away from the fortification? Mi iras de la fortificajo. Okay, and we're just going to say that's the fortification right there in front of this that big building. And how do you say I enter the fortification? Mi iras en la fortificajo or mi en iras la fortificajo. Now I'm going to teach you how to say I walk 
out of the fortification. So to say that, you use the word out of, which is L, L. And the way to use that in a sentence is, for instance, you'd say, um, Mi iras el la forticajo. Okay? And you notice there is no accusative on the forticajo because that's referring to when you're going into something or onto something. When you're going out of something, you don't need the accusative case. So you'd say, Mi iras el la forticajo. Now let's quickly just kill this scout because he's eyeballing me. And I guess while we're at it, we're going to learn the word for scout. Now, there's two main ways to say scout in Esperanto. You could use the traditional word for scout, which is scolto. However, there's a problem when you use that word. Although it means scout, in modern Esperanto, in most cases, it refers to actually the scouting movement, you know, where the kids get all the badges and stuff. Now, it still does mean like a scout as a military scout, but most people will assume you're actually talking about the scout movement. It's just one of those things because scouts are actually like the scout movement is actually pretty big in Esperanto, but all other scouts isn't something that's really referenced to, okay, very often because we're not, you know, militaristic type of people. But, you can use it also for military terms. So, you got scolto, okay? Now, the other way to say a scout, which is probably a lot more clear, is also for someone who's just learning Esperanto, is to use a new verb which I'm about to teach you. So the new verb is to explore. And to explore is esplori, esplori. So how do you think you'd say scout, based on what I've previously taught you? Well, think about it. What is a scout? A scout is a professional person who explores, okay? They explore the enemy position. So that would be esploristo, esploristo, okay? So how would you say she is a scout? She estas esploristo or she estas scolto. Now, I'm just going to use esploristo from now on, but I will do like a little bit of random testing every now and then just to see if you remember the other word, okay? So... How would you say, the scout wants to kill me? La esploristo volas mortigimen. La esploristo volas mortigimen. Okay, and she's also draining my energy so bad. These things are just too high level for me. I, I went a bit too far deep into this area. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly heal up. Oh wow, these things are getting higher level. Um... This is bad. I really wanted to explore this area, but I think I'm just a little bit out of reach at the moment because these things are like a good five levels above me and it's going to result in my death, without doubt. So, and now since we're attacking a spider, we might as well learn the word for spider as well. The word for spider is araneo, araneo, okay? And a good way to remember that is just think of like arachnoid and they'll kind of get you like at least partially the way there of remembering it. So yeah, it's araneo, araneo. So how would you say then, um, the spider wants to kill me? La araneo volas mortigi min. Okay, cool. Now, I'm going to teach you a few new verbs, but before I do that, let's just practice um, that one verb we learned earlier. How would you say, um, he washes himself? Li lava sin. Li lava sin. And how would you say he washes him as in another person? Li lavas lin. Okay? So now we're going to learn the verb for to stand. And to stand in Esperanto is stadi. Stadi. Okay? So how would you say I'm standing, for instance? Mi stardas. Mi stardas. So, then how would you say, um, the deer, that deer over there, stands near the tree? La cervo stardas apud la arbo. Apud la arbo. Okay, you remember that one from previous lessons? Uh, just give me one sec. Okay, sorry about that, my cat just randomly ran past my light and caused chaos in my room. Okay, so now we know next to, I just, as you've learned in the previous lesson, was a pud, but we're going to learn at now, okay? So if you wanted to say um, the spider stands at the tree, okay, for instance, you could say la araneo, sorry, la araneo stardas che la arbo. So at is che, okay? Now, obviously, 
it can be a little bit ambiguous at like in English like what it means but when you use chair it means in proximity to okay so it's like it's next to or it's like like for instance you can sit at a table so it's that it's basically like English use but only when talking about physical location so you wouldn't say um, I saw it um, uh, let me think uh, I can't think of an example, sorry, but yeah, it's only referencing physical um, location. Now there is another, there is other locations where you can use it where it's not quite physical, but we don't really care about that right now at this stage in your Esperanto. So how would you say um, the spider stands? You know, I'm going to teach you the word for base, and the word for base is Basel, Basel. Just so I can give you, like, teach you some sentences that actually make sense. So how would you say the spider stands at the base of the tree? Now, you might be able to form this based on what I've already taught you. And that is, La araneo stardas che la bazo de la arabo. You notice how I use de there? Now previously I've taught you that de pretty much um, means of, okay? Now the reason we're saying uh, de la arbol is because you're saying of the tree, so base of the tree. It's the same as English, so you can use de in the same way as you are in English just there. So the spider is standing at the base of the tree. La araneo stardas che la bazo de la arbol. Okay. And how would you say? Um, oh, this deer is not happy. How would you say then uh, the deer stands at uh, the base of the temple, okay? La turvo stardas che la bazo della templo. I'm just going to heal up a little bit because I'm getting smashed here. Okay, this deer is really being quite brutal in its attacks. Okay, so we've learned those. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a few other little words just so we can start moving along with the language. Now, you have already know how to say what. That is kio. Oh god, that was bad. That spider just attacked me when I was super low on health. Let me just heal up. You already learned what, and that is kio. Okay, and you've learned that thing. That is tio. So now I'm going to teach you something. And the word for something is io. Io, and it's spelled I-O. Okay, so how would you say then, for instance, um, let me just think of a good example. Something is in front of me. Io estas antal me. And how would you say something is behind me? Io estas malantal me. Now, I'm, how would you say then, for instance, um, I explore something? Mi esploras ion. Remember, esplori is a transitive verb because you're, you're actually exploring something, so you've got to use the accusative case there, that N sound at the end. And how would you say the spider wants to kill something? La araneo volas moritigi ion. And now I'm going to teach you another verb. So I'm actually smashing with the verbs in this lesson. And the verb I'm going to teach you is to see. And to see is vidi, vidi. So how do you think you would say, I see something? Mi vidas ion. Again, it has to be in the accusative case or that N sound. Mi vidas ion. And how would you say the spider sees me? La araneo vidas min. La araneo vidas min. And how would you say the spider wants something? La araneo volas ion. La araneo volas ion. Well, what are these guys? Well, they're pretty high level. I won't go down that way. Anyway, we're just going to do some revision of what we've learned so far in this lesson because we have pretty much run out of time already. I know that went by pretty quick. So, how do you say, I walk out of the temple? Mi iras el templo. 
And you know how I taught you before you can say me um and ida la templon? Well, with Esperanto you can say the same thing. You can say me elidas el la templon. Now you notice that I didn't use the accusative case again because it's the same. Um, but you have to kind of double it up where you say me elidas el la templon. It's just kind of one of those things, and you'll get used to it as time goes by. Okay, so me elidas el la templon. Or you can just say, Mi idas el la templo. Now, I hope I didn't just confuse the hell out of you, but you'll get the hang of it as we move along. Okay, and how do you say, um, base of the mountain? Baso de la monto. Baso de la monto. And how would you say, um, it stands at the base of the mountain? G stardas. Celebazo de la Monto. And how would you say, I want something? Mi volas ion. And how would you say, why does it want to kill me? Kial G volas moretigi min. Kial G volas moretigi min. And how do you say scout as in um, the traditional sense or the one that's used also for the scouting movement? Skolto. And how do you say scout as built from the verb? Esploristo. And last one, how do you say he washes himself? Li lava sin. Anyway, we've reached the end of this lesson now, so if you've, if you've enjoyed this, give it a like, share it around with your friends. You never know who might actually become hooked on Esperanto because of these videos. So yeah, just share it around. And if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, well, guess what? There will be no one around to Sanigivin. <laughs>